Live from Case at 12, the news at 530 starts right now. A quick trip to the store just before midnight. Now a San Antonio police investigating a murder. That victim shot while waiting for a family member to come out of a Walgreens. It all happened in the 4700 block of West Commerce. According to police, that family member went inside to use an ATM. Moments later, he and others in the store heard gunshots from outside. When police got to the scene, the 30 year old man was laying on the ground with a gunshot wound to his abdomen. He was taken to the hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The family member did tell police when he came out of the store, he saw a black vehicle driving off. Right now, no arrests have been made. Another shooting to tell you about this one on the northwest side, sending a juvenile to the hospital just after 11 o'clock last night. Officers called out to the 6500 block of Springhurst, not far from Babcock. The victims say he got into an argument with a man before he was shot. Police say he gave them a description of the shot of the suspect and the vehicle he was in. That victim was taken to the hospital. The incident remains under investigation. Well, today's the first Sunday of Advent, and for the first time since the pandemic started, Catholics in San Antonio are once again being offered the blood of Christ communion during Mass. Our Alyssa Cole joins us from outside San Fernando Cathedral downtown, where parishioners are again embracing the sacred practice. That's exactly right, Courtney. The full communion took place this morning. The Archbishop of San Antonio tells us they practice communion throughout the pandemic lockdown, but with limits to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. But today, according to the Center for Disease Control, more than 86% of people in Bear County have received at least one COVID-19 vaccination shot, and the church's leadership has found it acceptable to carry out the full communion. We have uh, uh, doctors and what science indicates and at this point we we are okay in in in, part, in letting people to participate uh, and receive the, the precious blood the archbishop says a high number of people participated in today's communion and he says this is a great time to start the practice again to prepare the catholic community for christmas Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. An early morning fire has left a family's east side home damaged but not destroyed. Camelia Juarez explains that fire appears to have been accidental. Magdalena Narvaez Alman grew up at this house on Hicks Avenue near I-10 East, but it may be a while before her family can go back inside. Everything's gone, even my important papers cell phones, you name it. San Antonio Fire says the home caught fire just after six Sunday morning when someone walked away from a burning cigarette. Alman says she was the one smoking. Right there in my room. So it started right there in my room and it just escalated to the front room. Alman says she is thankful no one was hurt. I feel great that at least we're okay. Nothing happened to anybody. Not even our animals, thank God. There is some damage to the front of the home and smoke damage inside, but SAFD says that can be fixed. I spoke with the family and they tell me that they do have relatives to stay with and they are reaching out to the Red Cross to get additional resources that they may need. Reporting on the east side, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Well, the capital murder trial for a former Border Patrol agent is about to begin. Juan David Ortiz is accused of killing four women in the Laredo area four years ago. The trial was moved to Bear County from Webb County after the judge granted a venue change. Tomorrow, we will be live streaming that trial gavel to gavel on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and on KSAT YouTube channel. To learn more about the events leading to Ortiz's arrest, you can watch our open court special right now on our website. News across America now. Police in New Orleans are trying to find a gunman who shot five people on Bourbon Street early this morning. Police say an argument escalated into a shooting with the gunman firing into a crowd of people. Three men and two women were hit. Police say none of the victim's injuries are considered to be life-threatening. This happened on the heels of another murder close by. Detectives say Saturday evening, an 18-year-old man was shot to death in the French Quarter. A man accused of killing a man and woman, then chewing off pieces of that man's face, is headed to trial tomorrow. Six years ago, Austin Haruf uh, reportedly left a Florida restaurant and ended up inside the victim's garage and allegedly attacked them with tools that he found. Haruf was uh, also accused of attacking the victim's neighbor who tried to help them. 
He has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity to two counts of first degree murder and other charges. The judge will be deciding whether or not he goes to prison for life or to a mental hospital. We are hearing from the other hero who helped save lives during last weekend's deadly shooting at Club Q in Colorado. Today, U.S. Navy Petty Officer Second Class Thomas James spoke out about the shooting that left five people dead. He said, quote, if I had my way, I would shield everyone I could from the nonsensical acts of hate in the world. But I'm only one person. Thankfully, we are family and family looks after one another, unquote. James is obviously still in the hospital, but is stable right now. The suspect, Anderson Aldrich, made his first court appearance last Wednesday, where a judge ruled he will be held without bond. His next court appearance is set for December 6th. It is a big travel day. Millions hitting the roads and taking to the skies as they return home from their Thanksgiving festivities. The number of Americans flying nearly at pre-pandemic levels. And despite the high gas prices, millions more drove to their destination. Zoreen Shaw has more on their journey back home. The post-Thanksgiving travel rush is on. Millions now heading home from their holiday gatherings. It was very busy at the airport, but they, they got us through, okay? At the airport in Fort Lauderdale, tons of people, but we made it through. TSA pre-check helps. Nationwide, air travel is close to 99% of the level it was in 2019. James McCleary says he waited 30 minutes to get through security in Orlando. It was busy. It, it was busy getting through the TSA. It, it moved fast, though. It wasn't like a standstill. Just a lot of people. There have been some hiccups for air travelers. According to FlightAware.com, on Saturday, about 66 flights were canceled, more than 4,400 delayed. Some of those delays happening in the Houston and Dallas areas, where there have been heavy rains and strong winds. When it comes to Thanksgiving holiday travel, Houston airports has seen a larger crowd than it did in 2019. And it's not just the skies. Close to 50 million Americans hit the road this holiday weekend, despite high gas prices. I filled up my car, I think, before I come, came up here, it was $5.40 something cents, and that was even cheaper for me, and this is four nineteen. so I was like, this is crazy. But weather could be a factor on some of the nation's roadways, with rain along the I-95 corridor in the east and winter storms in the Pacific Northwest. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Still ahead on the news at 5:30, a Southtown restaurant is hours away from closing its doors to begin a new chapter. Find out why the popular Rosario's is closing its South Alamo location. A longtime fixture in Southtown will be closing its doors tonight. We're talking about Rosario's on Alamo Street. Loyal customers of the Mexican restaurant making their way down for. One more meal at that location. The good news, Rosario's is moving to a brand new location on South St. Mary Street. A grand opening is in the works for some time next month. We're making this move not for this month or next month, but we're doing it for a lifetime. I've been here 30 years. I have several family members that will take the rain sooner or later, and uh, it's, it's for the next generation as well. The new 25,000 square foot Rosario's on South uh, St. Mary's will be a modern two story building that will offer a rooftop terrace, panoramic views of downtown and a private party house. I love Rosario's, the chips and salsa, just so good. The first place I ate in San Antonio oh. when I came here for a job interview. Oh my goodness. I just see they're keeping their doors open, but in a new location. Absolutely, good stuff there. All right, y'all, well, hopefully you've been able to get out and about and enjoy the beautiful weather that we've had on hand. Wrapping up the weekend, plenty of sunshine, clear skies have been found. If you're stepping out for any evening plans, temperatures right now in the 70s here in San Antonio, for the most part, we'll see those temperatures fall into the 60s shortly now that the sun is going down and then into the 50s later this evening. A lot to talk about in terms of the upcoming week. Humidity building, our next cold front moving in, and what we can expect on the back side of it coming up in a few.
Well, after finding some rain Friday night and early Saturday morning, this weekend has been beautiful across South Central Texas. Yesterday we had plenty of sunshine. It was a little windy out there today. Those winds significantly died down, but we still held on to the clear skies. Chilly this morning, waking up in the 40s here in San Antonio. Those temperatures were able to climb into the 70s earlier this afternoon. And for a good portion of our region, we are still in the 70s. If you're fixing to step out for any Sunday evening activities, 75 this hour officially over at San Antonio International, 76 up in Bulverde at 72 in Comfort right now, 75 in Hondo and 71 over in Uvalde. Now, one of the reasons why we were able to have such a wide temperature spread from this morning compared to this afternoon was thanks to relatively drier air that is still in place. You can see as we take a look at dew points, which is how we measure that low level moisture in the atmosphere in the 40s, which is very much in that dry category. So that definitely helps to add to that comfortableness factor when you do step outdoors into Monday and especially on Tuesday. What we're going to find though is high pressure moves east of the state of Texas. Our winds are going to turn back in from the southeast and that essentially means that more of that Gulf moisture is going to quickly work its way back into the San Antonio area and that humidity is going to build really more so by Tuesday where we'll have the potential to find some patchy drizzle early in the morning. You really will notice it stepping out for the morning drive, but as quickly as that humidity works back in, it is shoved back out to the Gulf of Mexico by midweek thanks to our next cold front that moves in early Wednesday morning. So we'll talk all about that, but first through the overnight hours tonight, I think really by the time a lot of us are waking up and fixing to step out the door for the morning commute tomorrow because of some saturated grounds that we still do have in place from Friday night's rain and light winds tonight. I think it's possible that we see some areas of patchy fog develop, especially up in the hill country. So that's something that we'll keep eyes on here early tomorrow morning. Maybe a few clouds trying to mix in near the San Antonio area as well. But then whatever we do find out there looks to break up throughout the first half of the day, leading way to mostly sunny skies as we head into our Monday afternoon. Before we can get there, though, it is still going to be chilly out there tomorrow morning. Stepping out, you will want the extra layer. We wake up to the 40s here in Bear County, 40 up in Bulverde, maybe some upper 30s across portions of the hill country as well. But like today, it's going to be a layering day. Chilly start, but after we see that sunshine take back over again into the afternoon hours, you are not going to need that extra layer with those temperatures climbing into the low 70s here in South Central Texas. We've got a forecast high around 73 degrees for your Monday afternoon, really warming things up though on Tuesday. We see that moisture and humidity work back in. It is going to be a muggy start to Tuesday morning plans. And again, some sprinkles certainly possible with overcast cloudy skies, maybe some pockets of drizzle. But then we see our next front work its way into South Central Texas early Wednesday. As of right now, the better rain chances look to sit just east of our area with this boundary. The two biggest things we'll find from Wednesday's front. Yes, cool cooler temperatures with afternoon temps in the 50s, but also it's going to be windy out there. Gusts upwards of 35, maybe even 40 miles per hour at times. So all of those Christmas decorations you have outdoors right now probably need to secure those by the time Wednesday rolls around, guys. Good advice. Thanks so much, Mia. All right, Larry, UTSA Roadrunners have cracked the top 25. Yes, they sure have. Coming off their largest comeback in school history, they are now back in the AP top 25 poll, and they also moved up in the coaches poll. Plus, Texas State earlier today fired Coach Spav. Coming up. The Roadrunners are already fired up to host the Conference USA Championship game this coming Friday at the Alamo Dome in Big Board Sports. Following their biggest comeback in program history yesterday, UTSA football is ranked in the Associated Press Top 25 for the first time this season at number 23, and they also moved up one spot to 24 in the coaches' poll. UTSA trailed UTEP 24-0 at the Alamo Dome before coming back to beat the Miners 34-31, holding UTEP scoreless the final 26 minutes and 56 seconds. Linebacker Dadrian Taylor, who had a 73-yard pick six in the second quarter, said UTEP hit them first, but the Roadrunners stood tall and finished the fight. 
we live for those kind of games. Just like we were talking about in the middle of this game. These are the games you live for. I mean, like, last few weeks we've been up a lot, and uh, this is just a different one, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying, you never, you, you always got a plan until you get hit in the mouth, and they hit us in the mouth early, so we had to adjust, we had to come back, and, you know what I'm saying, uh, great, great win by the boys, and I love this team. UTSA announced an attendance of 26,000 fans at the Dome on Saturday. Head coach Jeff Trailer wants the Dome packed even more for the championship game. We need the city to show up. I mean, we, we got, it's got to be like tonight times two for us to have a, a competitive chance. And we worked hard to get that home field. We can't waste it, man. We cannot waste it. So we, we need to get this place packed. We, we should be shooting for the record. I mean, come on. It's the second consecutive championship at home. This is hard to do, man. I know what we got to do, but we got to get 50,000 people in here. If I got to go around the town, whatever it takes, we got to get them here. North Texas defeated Rice 21-17 yesterday to earn a return trip to the Alamo Dome for the championship. UTSA defeated the Mean Green 31-27 on October the 22nd, and obviously UNT wants a different result in the rematch. I can, you know, off the top of my head, remember what it felt like in that locker room. Uh, everybody, um, you know, what everybody felt like. Um, and so we're, we're all ready to get back to San Antonio and uh, play again, and, uh, you know, we'll be ready. Here's the matchup, UTSA versus North Texas in the Dome on Friday at 6.30 p.m. and UTSA is currently favored by eight and a half points. Texas State football is moving on from head coach Jake Spavital. Texas State Director of Athletics Don Coriel made the announcement this afternoon via an open letter saying, quote, we are making a change in the leadership of our football program, end quote. Jake went 13 and 35 in his four years with the Bobcats, including four and eight in back-to-back -back seasons before he was let go. Coach Spav had one year remaining on his initial five-year deal and is expected to be owed nearly $400,000. Coriel thanked Jake for his service and wished his family the best moving forward. The search for a new head football coach is underway. After enjoying a bye week, UIW will return to action for the second round of the FCS playoffs this Saturday. The Cardinals have scored 66 or more points in three of their last four games, and quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. has been at the center of it all with 50 total touchdown passes on the season. Incredible. Cardinals will host 10-2 Furman and Gale and Tom Benson Stadium Saturday at 1 p.m. We have reached the fourth round of the UIL high school football playoffs and seven area teams were left alive in a hunt for a state title. That includes the Brennan Bears in the Class 6A Division I playoffs. The Bears defeated Lake Travis in the third round Friday night 34-17 thanks to a standout performance from quarterback Ashton DuBose who accounted for five total touchdowns. Brennan has won all three of their playoff games by double digits, but they will face their toughest test of the season in the fourth round. The defending state champion Austin Westlake who are riding a 53-game win winning streak. So the Bears will face Westlake in the Dome Saturday at 2 p.m. In Class 5A Division 1, Smithson Valley will play College Station at the field in Pflugerville that same afternoon at 2 p.m. Class 4A D1, Bernie will take on Cal Allen at Alamo Stadium Friday night at 7.30. In Class 4A Division 2, Quero faces Silsby in NRG Stadium Friday at 1.30 in the afternoon. On the other side of the bracket, Wimberley takes on Lago Vista and Hutto on Friday at 7.30 p.m. In Class 3A Division 2, Poth faces Tidehaven at Texas State Bobcat Stadium at 7 at night and Shiner will play Refurio at Rattler Stadium in San Marcos also Friday night at 7. The Spurs scored a season-high points total last night, but it still wasn't enough to beat LeBron and the Lakers, who earned a hard-fought 143-138 to victory, handing the Spurs their eighth straight loss. During post-game, Kelvin Johnson was asked, how did the Spurs stay positive during a losing streak like this? We just counted out before the season even started, so, you know, what, what, what do it matter now what the media says, you know what I mean? Like, what, why does it, it, it doesn't bother us now. Like, you know, we started off good, and like, everybody in the media was saying, oh, they're going to be bad. You know, then we go on a rough, rough patch. Now the media's saying we're bad, so why well, it don't really matter. And like, you know, we go out there and, and play and compete and have fun and you know trust each other, move the ball and play play how we know uh, how how we know is our way of basketball. That's all they can do tonight on Instant Replay. Greg Simmons will sit down with Kelvin to talk about the Spurs season. Don't miss it after the night beat. Sounds like he's figured out don't eat the rat poison. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> we'll be right back.
All right, chilly out there tomorrow morning. Still nice into the afternoon as we see some more sunshine stick with us. The humidity really builds in by Tuesday and then our next front arrives early Wednesday morning. That'll drop temperatures down to a more festive feel and it'll make it windy, guys. I'll be looking forward to Wednesday. Thank you, me, and thank you for watching. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. See you then. Have a good evening.